Yeah, hi, hello, welcome to our YouTube channel. Myself, Sandil Kumar, Biology teacher in Vidya Lakshmi CBSE. Today, we are going to deal in a chapter Molecular Base of Inheritance, the important topic packaging of DNA helix. Okay, so what is the packaging of DNA helix? The DNA helix is nothing but a genetic material, how it used to be packed or inside the particular cell. Here we are going to deal about both the prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic cell. Okay. So, especially in a prokaryotic cell, we will take an example E. coli. In this particular E. coli, the genetic material is nothing but the DNA which used to be condensed to form a nucleoid DNA. How it used to be condensed means with the help of the special kind of Pastorally charged protein. This because of pastorally charge, it used to be condensed with a, a genetic material called DNA. So, here we already known the DNA is negatively charged, so easily it used to be condensed to form a the particular nucleoid DNA in prokaryotes. But in the case of eukaryotes, there is a set of Positively charged basic protein called histones. Okay. The histone is a kind of protein which is playing a very important role in condensation of a genetic material in eukaryotes. Okay. But there are various kind of protein as there in our body. There are various kind of proteins are exist in our body. All the proteins are condensed by the different proportion of amino acid. Okay. There are the different types of amino acids are condensed to form a protein in a different proportion actually. Okay. So, in that case here, the stones are rich in pastorally charged basic amino acid residues is nothing but a lysine and arginine. Mostly the lysines and arginine is an amino acid which you could identify in a stone protein. And here, for the condensation of our genetic material, the DNA is the genetic material, right? This used to be wrapped around, this is the wrapping, wrapping around the nucleosome, okay? So, the histone octomer is nothing but a nucleosome, actually, when the genetic material as well as this particular octomer condensed to form a nucleosome or nucleosome structure used to say, okay? But here, when our genetic material used to wrap around means when the stones are in a octomer stage. Okay. So, this is what a actually the stone protein is a negative uh, positively charged sorry the stone protein is positively charged our genetic material is negatively charged. So, easily it used to bound each other. Okay. And here the negatively charged DNA wrap around the stone octomer and gives the nucleosome this is what periodically I said. Okay. So, especially our genetic material need a octomer stone, the two, the stone supposed to be an octomer with the different types of stone protein. Okay. There are stone protein 1 is there, 2A, 2B, 3, stone 4, like that depend upon the proportion of amino acid, there are different types of stone protein is there. And these are all condensed to form a one octomer stage around that our genetic material wraps. Once it has been wrapped around the gen, uh, the stone protein, then that particular structure is called nucleosome. Okay, I hope you have understood. So here see, this is the overall this is octomer stage actually. For your understanding, only the one stone has been given, but it is constitute of. 8 stone protein. Okay. So, let us get into it. Here, a typical nucleosome, which is called nucleosome actually. So, the stone protein which is wrapped around by a genetic material that is called nucleosome that contain an about 200 base pair. 200 base pair in the sense is nothing but a R. Um, nitrogenous base okay for example g a t c a this is a 
single strand for a G triple bond C for a, a T for T A and C triple bond G A again double bond T this is another single strand actually we already known G is complementary to the C and A is complementary base pair to the T ok. So, this is what the two strand and this particular base can be intact with this particular strand with the help of the ribose or pentose sugar used to say ok. This is called pentose sugar and both the base can be bind with the help of the phosphodiester bond. phosphodiester bond ok this is how the structural organization of a double helix ok and this how many base pairs are there 1 2 3 4 5 like that there are 200 base pair of DNA which is wrapped around the, the particular histone protein once it is wrapped around that is called nucleosome that nucleosome contain a genetic material called a DNA that DNA has a 200 base pair ok. So, therefore, the total number of nucleosome in human want to calculate how you can. So, we already we are known the 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power of 9 base pair are there in a human genetic material ok. Now, we want to know how many number of nucleosome ok. So, the single nucleosome contain 200 base pair in the sense if you divide with this easily we are going to get the number of a nucleosome. So, let us see the 200 we are taken here and the 2 0 just consider as a 2 just we will do a, a 9 minus 2 we are going to get a 7 and with the help of 2 again we are adding. 2 3 2 3 is ok. So, that is what the answer we got 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power of 7. So, this is what the total number of nucleosome which is exist in human ok and next and here the nucleosome constitute the repeating unit to form a chromatin in lower class you would have studied especially the one particular cell which contain a genetic material in the form of chromatin. The genetic material is a common word depend upon the constituent it is named as DNA or a nucleosome or chromatin or chromosome ok. This based on a constituent of the genetic material it got a different name but commonly called as genetic material ok. In the form of double helix that is called DNA, DNA double strand ok and RNA means ribonucleic acid deoxyribonucleic acid the DNA is a double stranded helix and uh, the DNA when condensed with the histone protein that is called nucleosome. The nucleosomes are condensed to form a chromatin structure again the chromatin structure condensed to form a particular chromosome that is what we are dealing here especially see here the DNA double standard helix ok. We already know this is the base G means here is opposite the complementary base is going to be a C. A means that complementary base is going to be T and this particular region this is called as a backbone of the DNA helix. So, both the phosphate, phospho diester and pento sugar which bind with the particular base which is bound which has been bind with the particular base that is called pento sugar, pento sugar ok. So, both the pento sugar and the phosphodiester bond is considered as a backbone of 
DNA. Okay, so this particular DNA used to wrap around the histone protein when it is in the octomer stage. Okay, it used to wrap around this particular histone protein when it is in octomer stage. So now this particular structure is called as nucleosome. Okay, this nucleosomes are again undergoing the condensation because of the condensation you will get a solenoid form the structure is called solenoid okay so in solenoid in physics you would have seen right the solenoid coil like that this nucleosome are coiled because of the coiled structure it is called a solenoid form and this solenoid form again condensed to form a this condensation to form a structure called a chromatin this structure is called chromatin okay this chromatin again condensed to form a chromosomal structure when you will get a chromosomal structure means during the cell division especially in a metapase stage during the mitotic cell division propase metapase is there right especially in a metapase stage you get you can get a chromosomal structure like this okay you get a chromosomal structure like this this is considered as a p arm and this is considered as a q arm so here this chromatin has been condensed like this to form a the particular arm structure because of that we are called as chromosome we got a particular structure right? that is called as chromosome okay how the condensation take place means here the chromatin condensed to form a particular structure right that is because of non histone protein non histone protein so easily you can remember here the histone protein playing an important role for the condensation of nucleosome similarly the chromosomal condensation is the right the chromatin condensed to form a chromosomal structure like a arms p arm or a q arm that is because of the non histone protein that is because of non histone protein okay because of the non histone protein molecule it is condensed to form a chromosomal structure okay so here see the chromatin is the thread like stained body okay it seems like a thread like okay it seems like a thread right and uh, the nucleosome in chromatin it seems like a beads on string okay the nucleosome in a chromatin the nucleosome this is a nucleosome right which is exist in a chromatin structure this particular structure it seems like a beads on a string okay see here this is the structure beads on a string okay like a mudichi solvom tamil la okay la like that beads on a string next to see the chromatin packaged how it used to be packaged means first the chromatin fiber okay it's packed like a fiber many chromatins are packed each what is it over and over and got a fiber like structure and this chromatin condensed to form a chromosomal structure especially in a metapase periodically we are discussed so this condensed to form a chromosomal structure at a metapase stage the condensation the condensation of chromatin is because of non histone chromosomal protein this is because of the non histone chromosomal protein okay so here let us deal if you take a on complete chromosome you can easily understand for understanding this diagram has been added so in a entire mitotic chromosome it may about a 1400 nanometer from this chromosome the particular condensed chromatin we are taking out and magnifying this is the magnified image it on about 700 nanometer okay if you get a this is what the condensed section of chromosome this is the magnified image again this particular part if you magnify you will get a structure like this it is about a 300 nanometer and in this sense this is nothing but a nucleotide by the structure you could identify okay and again if you magnify this particular part you could see the structure like this this is also a what is that 
30 nanometer chromatin fiber packed nucleosome okay so already we have discussed right the especially the nucleosomes are condensed to form a fiber like structure this is what the fiber like structure if you take the part of this and if you magnify you will get a structure like this it is on about 30 nanometer and again from this particular fiber take a particular part again if you magnify it you could get a structure that is what we have discussed beads on string form of a chromatin beads on a string form of chromatin okay this both the nucleosome are bound together with the help of the dna dna double helix this is what okay both are intact together with the help of a dna negatively charged if you magnify it again we already know it has a double helix like this okay so this is what short region of dna double helix so this is what the condensation overall condensation of a dna okay so this is what the packaging of dna helix okay in a chromosome this is what the entire process so the dna especially the dna is condensed wrap around the nucleosome form a string like beads on a string and this condensed to form a fiber like structure again is condensed to form a chromosome sorry chromatin this chromatins are condensed to form a chromosomal structure okay i hope you have understood let us uh, get into the types of chromatin okay there are two types of chromatin based on its function okay so what does that means first one is a u chromatin the another one is a heterochromatin what is u chromatin actually it is nothing but the chromatin which is loosely packed transcriptionally active okay what is transcriptionally active so for that you supposed to know about the central dogma of life okay so what is the central dogma of life the central dogma of life is nothing but here i will make dna to dna that particular process is called replication dna to mrna transcription mrna to protein process is called translation okay so this is the basic principle of all the life which is exist in the universe without this particular function the cells cannot undergo the reproduction or a cell division okay so here the transcription is and uh, what is it replication transcription and translation is very very important especially here transcriptionally active region we are talking uh, which is going to be a transcriptionally active means in the complete dna sequence only the particular part may carry the genetic information okay only the particular part may carry genetic information that is called as gene okay which have a capability to express particular protein even the insulin keratin protein even the histamine we have discussed this protein and all expressed because of the particular gene okay that is called as gene used to say that gene the part of the sequence which have a capability to express the particular protein that region is called as transcriptionally active and that used to be loosely packed okay that chromatin that chromatin is called a euchromatin and if you stain also you may get light stain okay because it is loosely packed if you add any stain uh, stain also it won't stain that okay if you had any strainer it won't stain but in the case of heterochromatin that is densely packed very closely packed inactive region of chromatin inactive in the sense it doesn't carry any information it don't have any information to express okay so it strains dark i understood so this is the two types of chromatin you could identify here 
heterochromatin you could see and uh, this is a centromere and a uh, euchromatin ok. So, the euchromatin is a region which is transcriptionally active and the heterochromatin is the right this region the telomeres as well as in the nearby the centromere it is inactive region of the chromosome ok. So, only the euchromatin u means presence eukaryotic we were discussed right. So, the euchromatin has a information to express that is why it is a transcriptionally active ok. With this we will end we will see you on another video thank you please like share and subscribe our channel thank you so much.